The most important aspect of our project is to build a tool that the Academy of Natural Sciences can use to truly educate students. Our team decided to illustrate the natural science principle of physiology and the applied science principle of conservation of energy. Physiology is all about how the parts of the body function, and we're going to show how different parts of a leg interact to create a jump. Conservation of energy is a key principle to all sciences, especially engineering. It's all about the relationship between energy in and out and how it is conserved and transformed between the different types. After thorough concept development and decision making, the clear choice moving forward was a grasshopper model. The physiology of the hind legs can be taught through a transparent femur casing that will display the inner working muscles and cuticles that produce the jump. Students will control the contraction of these muscles and putting a leg angle and cuticle spring displacement. The hopper illustrates the conservation of energy via the relationship between the stored energy and the jump's kinetic and potential energies, which will be measured against the backdrop board as well as with accessible tools such as stopwatches and tape measures. This satisfies the crucial need of interactive experimentation, having adjustable inputs and outputs. Listen closely to the song to learn more about how you can use Jumpin' for Jewels as a fun and educational tool. Jumpin' for Jewels, Jumpin' for Jewels, make the grasshopper jump, it's really so cool. Contracting the flexor makes it bend in the legs Then good contraction in the femur will help the hopper jump away Cause displacement in the spring will store the energy Then release the flexor muscle and see the physiology Jump in for jewels, jump in for jewels Try yourself and learn all the rules Jump in for jewels, jump in for jewels Make the grasshopper jump, it's really so cool is kinetic, that means the hopper is in motion to reach its full potential. It's gotta keep on going past its highest point, converting energy to land safely on the ground with initial velocity. Jump in for jewels, jump in for jewels, try yourself and learn all the rules. Jump in for jewels, jump in for jewels, make the grasshopper jump, it's really so cool. about energy conservation and how grasshoppers use it in the muscles in their legs and it's also all around us in every single place energy is transferred but it's never erased bugs are complex creatures with physiology they've got a special way of doing things just like you and me the grasshopper product addresses many needs and specifications from the stakeholders. Students can relate the product to an insect that they are familiar with while witnessing the inner working physiology because the model is recognizable as a grasshopper and the femur, internal muscles, and cuticle representations are visible. Students can also control the input of different angles and cuticle spring displacements because the flexor and extensor muscles in the femur are contractible. Variations in angle and contraction will create the respective consistent outputs of projectile motion and kinetic and potential energies. This will create a jump that represents the way an actual grasshopper jumps. The length and height of the jump fits within the constraints of the backdrop board and is measurable in a classroom setting. The speed of the jump is also measurable in relation to a stopwatch. In order for accurate, consistent results, there must be no rotation in the jump and it must follow a straight path. The backdrop board and grasshopper model are colorful and fun, which excites students and tracks passers-by. The board also folds up for easy storage and transportation. The experiment can be a singular short experience at a cart by trying just one angle and displacement input combination, or it can be used for multiple input-output combinations in the classroom to further prove the point of the natural and applied sciences. To encourage student interest, one student can be assigned each task, such as timer or a quarter, to work together as a team. Ideally, there will be multiple grasshoppers so groups can compete to get the longest or fastest jump. The prototype was designed to prove the concept of displacing springs in the femur to illustrate the principle of conservation of energy. We want to show that we can get consistent and accurate results with this aspect of our design. The physical prototype varies slightly from Creo design. The initial prototype Creo design shows connected feet to keep the legs moving in the same direction at the same time. This was changed for the physical prototype so we could focus on the legs individual energy storage being equal rather than just the legs moving simultaneously. We made other changes to help the manufacturing process, including small changes in the tibia, femur, and the co-contraction block. The objective of the experiment is to study the effects of changing the spring constant and displacement, thus the stored input energy on the experimental energy output to determine which springs and displacements are most accurate and consistent. The inputs of the experiments are spring constant and displacement, and the output are height, displacement, and time travel during the jump. 
These outputs will be used to calculate potential and kinetic energy. An experiment will be considered successful when at least 90% energy is conserved. The testing matrix shows the plan to use three springs of varying spring constants each at five different displacements to compare input and output energy. Unfortunately, the prototype failed to jump, so the testing matrix was not completed. Even though we could not perform the whole experiment, we did successfully move the leg and determined that a spring with a length of 2 inches and spring constant of 11.5 pounds per inch allowed the leg to move most consistently. From the lack of success in the prototype jump, we learned a lot about how to create a better prototype in the future. The muscles simulated by fishing line did what they were designed to do, change the angle and compress the spring. However, there were some details that were overlooked when designing the prototype. Specifically, during contraction, we could not stop the spring from moving around and bending in the femur rather than just compressing. This prevented us from using the spring constant and Hooke's law to accurately calculate the input energy. It also proved extremely difficult to release the flexors for both legs at the same time. In the final design, this should be a simple mechanism that can easily extend the muscle instantly rather than a knob that needs to be carefully adjusted. This knob and notch designed for co-contraction also occasionally got stuck because of the knots in the fishing line. A lot of time was spent trying to assemble the pieces inside the tube. We could fix this by creating a leg that opened up and could be worked on more easily. Ultimately, we were able to make the spring and string system successfully move the leg, but we were unable to prove the conservation of energy principle. We've determined that for the first prototype, it would be better to focus on a more integral component function such as a leg mechanical system working in the first place, rather than trying to so closely mimic the final design. If Edorov decides to pursue our project, they will need to make adjustments to the overall design. Even though the concept itself satisfies many of the crucial needs and specs, the prototype has fallen short of proving its ability to function properly. But with adjustments in stabilizing the spring and knob systems, the final product could be a fun, unique, and educational tool for many students.